Welcome back, lovely people. So if you were here last week, I hope you were, otherwise link in the video description for the video I've made. I did talk about something called la cuisine de ménage, which is the old name that we use in France that, uh, you know, describe home cooking. What you've seen on the channel so far for the last five years is the type of cooking that you use culinary techniques from school, from restaurants, to give you kind of a restaurant-ish kind of dish, okay? Uh, this is more the restaurant side of cooking. But the true home cooking in France also exists and has a whole bunch of recipes we have not even started to make at all, okay? And these recipes are the recipes that people are making in their home, in France, and people with family coming back from work and with no time, they just want to throw some ingredients, make a dish very simply and very quick. So what we're gonna do moving forward on the channel, I'm gonna pick a whole bunch of recipes I've never made. I'm gonna go through the mission, make them, taste them, and I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna tell you my opinion and how they compare to the real thing because there's always a link somehow to the recipe people are trying to make and they kind of look alike of the thing that is usually made with the restaurant technique. So, a bit of an adventure going on, and I'm sure there's plenty of things to learn, so let's start today with number one, the broccoli and cauliflower gratin, French home style, let's go. So, let's compare first the restaurant style of gratin. Usually what I would do, cook the vegetables, you make a bechamel or a mornay sauce, which is a bechamel with egg yolks, and cheese into it, and you put the sauce over some cheese, you bake it, okay? The home style is different. You don't go through the techniques of making the bechamel or the mornay or anything like this. You cook the vegetables, and then you make a sauce cold in one bowl that you're gonna pour over. The sauce is gonna be made with cream, eggs, and almond meal, a bit of butter, salt and pepper, and of course, some cheese on top. Now, step number one, of course, we're going to be cooking the vegetables, two different pans, one for the cauliflower, one for the broccoli. You're going to put one or two tablespoons of rock salt in there and bring the water to the boil. As soon as the water boils, you're going to put all your vegetables in and you're going to cook them for 10 minutes on the dot. You can use a timer, which is what I'm going to use here. I'm going to press 10 minutes to go. You're also now going to start to preheat your oven at 210 degrees Celsius. I'll put the equivalent on Fahrenheit on the screen. And while this is happening and this is cooking, we're gonna prepare the magic mix. And now for our magic mixture, this is meant to mimic how bechamel. I'm taking a whisk, I've rinsed that bowl. So we're gonna put all of the cream in. Very nice. Okay, put this on the side. I'm gonna put the two eggs, full eggs. And it's always a good idea to inspect if there's any shells, so I've break them in, a, in another bowl. And what I can tell you technically here so far is that we're making a custard. All of the almond meal, or grand almond, also called. Huh? And we're gonna mix that in. So this is, a, in effect, this is a custard with almond, which is quite interesting. And the last touch, of course, is to add some seasoning, and that's gonna be, of course, the salt and pepper. Do your liking, so a good grind, and make sure it's well seasoned, you don't want something boring. And that's it, we are done, the mixture is ready. Now I've got three minutes left on my timer, plenty of time to add the finishing touches. So we're gonna use a baking dish, I'm using a rather small one, I'm not doing the exact quantities that I'll give you in the recipe because it's too much, but, you need to coat the bottom of your dish with butter. So wash your hand, of course, as always, and then you're gonna rub the entire dish everywhere with butter. The vegetables are almost done, as you can see on the timer. This is my best advice. You want to improve your cooking, get yourself a timer to know exactly all the cooking time. As here, as you can see, I don't have to worry about anything. All I'm doing is waiting for the beep to go on and then tell me it's done. Okay, so let's go. I'm gonna drain these. Okay, and not rinse them, very important. You don't want to rinse them with cold water or anything. We're just drying them in a sieve and that's it. We're gonna put them in a dish straight off. What I like to do is always a little bit of seasoning at the bottom of my dish, salt and pepper. Now this is me, you don't have to do it. Okay, and then this is super hot. You can use your hand if you want, but you may burn yourself. So I'm gonna grab here a pair of tongs or something and I'm gonna start by placing everything. I'm gonna put a layer of cauliflower first at the bottom and then do a, a broccoli and cauliflower at the upper layers. So here we are, I tried my best to arrange things, you know, but I'm not a fan of broccoli because it's gonna fall apart. And I would say the first little, not mistake, but for 10 minutes was a little bit long for the broccoli. I would say almost eight minutes would be good. So what's the next step is to 
pour over that custard over the vegetables and then add cheese. I'm really curious because it didn't stick like a bechamel would, uh, but you do have to cover the whole lot with cheese. Uh, so I guess we're going to be saved by that to cover the whole, the whole thing. So that's it. A bit of cheese on there. And we are done. We're going to be cooking this in the oven for 15 minutes. So here we are. It's out of the oven. As I thought, I had to spend an extra two minutes under the broiler just to give it a bit of a crisping up kind of look. But this is how the home cooking style looks like very simple and very plain so i'm going to leave it to cool down a little bit and then i'm going to try it out and see what it's all about okay so we're all done so testing time how does this thing look first quite simple huh? nice color i've added some cracked pepper on top but there is a custard in there and uh, that's hidden under so compared to the bechamel it's all about the top thing here it seems to be some kind of treasure that is so let's ooh. So look, first off, it is custardy, it is creamy. Ooh, it has kind of, look at this, kind of cooked. Look at that, it's almost like a gratin kind of effect. And if I'm pouring that thing here, you will see, let's, let's bring some more, but there's still some, you see, some sauce in there. So I've prepared a little spoon here. You can see the custard, it's nice and moist. And this is to be served, uh, by the way, with anything like chicken breast, um, you know, turkey, things like this, white meats, and you're gonna pile fry it. And this is gonna be a, a perfect side. So a big a piece of cauliflower here. I'm not a fan of broccoli, so I'm just gonna have a bit of cheese in there. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so by taking the, the piece of cheese, I have got the whole experience here. So I had the cauliflower. It's actually well cooked, 10 minutes. It's not too soggy or anything. The custard is nice. I think you really have to maybe add a little bit of nutmeg in there. You want something with a bit more taste. It's a little bit plain, just kind of salt and pepperish kind of thing. And the cheese is of course cheese. It's great. So you know when you bite into it, but it's kind of you think you want more. So I would almost change that recipe by putting more things in the custard, I add some extra ingredients and maybe a mid layer of cheese in the middle, a mid layer and then another layer on top. So you have the cheesy custard, but I love the texture of the custard and that technique, honestly, it's a little bit eggy, but it actually works really well because it's not dry, it's nice and moist. So good one. And that's it, that completes our number one home style recipe. So what can we say? First off, yes, it is much quicker than the usual recipe that I'm making. But you see, you lose a little bit of the taste. Of course, this is just one of many that we're gonna do. So make sure to join me again next week because we're gonna keep on going and try to explore all of this recipe. But what I like really, honestly, it's fast, it's healthy. And you know, if you're looking for something for a side, it's a great little dish. So I'll see you all next week for another French cooking video. Don't forget to join me again because there's gonna be some interesting stuff coming up. See you then. Thank you.